In the last video tutorial on viewing assessment results, we focused our attention on cohort and group performance. In this tutorial, we'll drill down to the results and feedback of individual users. Now, our start point for this tutorial is in the assessment overview screen that displays the results for all students within a chosen cohort and group. Now, if you need a refresher on how we get to this point, then please view the previous tutorial in this series. We'll use the list display at the bottom right of this screen to first identify the student whose results we wish to view. Now each row of the list represents an individual student. By default, students are ordered alphabetically from top to bottom by surname. You can reorder the list by clicking the appropriate column header. For example, if you want to list the students from highest score to lowest, then click the score column header. Now in this example, we'll view the results of the students with the lowest score we can reorder the list by clicking the score column header and this will place the student with the lowest score at the top. The list shows that the student scored 143 out of 150. To view more detailed results, click the first small icon to the right of the row listing. An assessment summary screen for that student will be shown that provides a total score and an overview of every question showing each element, that being conceptual, calculation and technical measurement. Alongside each question number are colour-coded blocks that relate to the problem domain, for example, tablets and capsules, and problem complexity, for example, unit dose. A key for these can be found at the foot of the assessment summary page. Let's start by looking at a question that's been answered correctly. For this example, we'll select question 21, which is the first question in the injections problem domain. Now you'll see that there are three main components to the feedback for this question. The top portion of the screen represents the key elements of the problem, i.e. the prescribed dose and the medication container label showing the dispensed dose and quantity slash volume this is contained in. The centre portion of the screen shows the correct answer to the problem and includes problem setup, so conceptual, calculation and including any rounding of the calculated answer required, and technical measurement, so in this example a volume of medication measured in a syringe. The lower portion of the screen shows the student's answer to the problem and allows you to make a discrete comparison with that of the correct solution above. Now in this example you can see that the student has been marked correct for conceptual competence, correct for calculation competence and also correct for technical measurement competence. Ok, let's look at another question. To return to the assessment summary screen, click the continue button. Let's look at a question that has been answered incorrectly. Now we can see errors on question 33, so we'll look at this one in this example. You can see that this is an IVI question and there's a little more feedback to consider. As before, the screen is divided to show the problem, followed by the correct answer and beneath the student's answer. With IVI questions, students are first required to demonstrate competence in calculating the volume of fluid to be delivered per hour, i.e. the hourly rate as mils per hour and show how the hourly rate and total infusion volume would be entered or measured using a volumetric infusion pump. In this example, we can see that the student has made a conceptual error by entering an incorrect measurement unit at the problem setup phase and all other elements have been marked correct. In the second stage of an IVI question, students are required to calculate the number of drops per minute required if they had to deliver this fluid via an IV administration set. So in this example, we can see that the student has been marked incorrect when setting the drip rate using the fluid control mechanism of the IV administration set. The student has measured 84 drops per minute when the answer should have been 83 drops per minute. Now when you are finished reviewing individual questions, click the back to assessment overview button at the top of the screen to return to your list of students. Now that's it for now and thanks for taking the time to watch this tutorial.